Yeah, he's coming back to have a look. He can't, he can't work this out, this guy. <laughs> he can't work it out at all. Probably a police helicopter. It says a man trapped on a box. Uh, no, not at the moment, not fishing. Wow, he's noisy, he's right over the top of me. Well people, it's totally awesome fishing time again. I'm down at a place called Swanage, Dorset, on a headland. And Mike's, uh, for my birthday, uh, booked in for a double family visit to Anvil Lighthouse. I think it's Anvil Point, is it? So I've come down to a quarry. I've only been here <laughs> 20 minutes, it's getting dark. It doesn't look at me this camera because it's low light. It's getting dark. I had a lot of trouble climbing down there, a little bit sketchy, the old scratchy shins bit at my age, so we'll be doing it. Because once I get down here I go, oh, that's a much easier way up there, Graham. So I know, because I'm going to hit this tomorrow morning, chuck some big baits out, fish baits, and just see what it's about, and maybe have a go ras fishing. But what I am going to do is have a go for squid, and that's why I've rushed down, I'm not eating anything or anything. I've got just a Nomura rod, fixed ball, about 15 pound line on there. Got the squid jig, which you might have seen in our squid videos before. No idea which colour, I don't know, but what I have done, I've got one of these. It's a Silim light stick, it's quite a biggish one. But I've got a piece of plastic tube that they come with. These, by the way, are at least 35 to 40 years old. I couldn't believe it when I got up in the room and I cracked the first one and shook it, and it actually did work. So I'm going to be throwing this around till I lose it. All this, I've got some more in there because going by the moon up there, it's neat tides and not big tides. So I don't know, it's just dark, it's the time of year when you should get squid coming in. When I'm making this, it's November, December. In the UK, that's normally chance getting squid. And down here, Swanage Way, I just thought, you know, it's got to be worth a go because the water's so clear. So, wish me luck. I'm going to throw this out, probably lose it. Now, I'm in a rush, but tomorrow during the daylight, Mike's going to uh, probably help me film a little bit, get some different shots here. Tank will ready. <laughs> the thing I'm probably going to have problems with is that plastic tube and the plastic silum light stick are going to add more buoyancy to the jig, so even though the jig's weighted, it's going to have a slow sink to it, so just going to pop it along, you know, see how long it takes to try and reach the bottom without getting snags. It's going to be really rocky around here, but I'm going to give it at least an hour into the dark. It gets dark early this time in the winter. Probably a blank, but you've got to try. Exactly what I said happens, uh, the plastic in here and the ball actually slowing the sink rate of the jig up. I wonder if I've got some heavier jigs. Well, I've done quite a bit of casting, just had a break, but what's happening is when I cast really hard, as tight as I push that light stick into the tube there, it slides down. So I really needed to put, say, a barrel swivel here, just about whatever distance they fish with these light sticks. I don't know whether to fish it close to the lure or farther back. But that's sliding down, so that's sort of probably, you can see that there, the light stick with this. I might try a few casts without the light stick. Nothing yet, the moon's gone behind a cloud, so I'm hoping that might boost it a bit. But a couple of pointers. Obviously it's extremely sketchy at 70 coming down, where I've just come down in the failing light, so that's stupid, so don't go fishing on your own on the rocks, people, like I have. Um, especially at night and somebody you don't know. Um, 
So as soon as I get down, I can see a slightly easier way to climb back up. The other thing is, there's four in our family, and they, sorry, five in our family, they all have mobile phones. Fine, it's okay, I've got my mobile phone, but where we are, there ain't no signal. Now that's not sensible if we've got any trouble on the rocks, is it? You know, they know we're going to be fishing. Sounds like AC Rescue ready. They know I'm going to be fishing anyway, so, um, but of course if I fall in the water, that's not too clever at all. And there's the old Coast Guard helicopter. He's probably come to see this. There's a big light down <laughs> Actually, the, the lighthouse up there should be working. They probably think this is the lighthouse. Turn one of the old Cornish wreckers there. The other thing is, there's a nice flat platform down there, but I don't really fancy it, to be honest, because at the end of the day, it's night, there's a southwesterly airflow, it's not rough at all, but there could be the odd coastal chip going past there. Yeah, he's coming around to have a look. He can't, he can't work this out, this guy. <laughs> he can't work it out at all. Probably a police helicopter. It says a man trapped on the rocks. Uh, no, not at the moment, I'm fishing. Wow, he's noisy, he's right over the top of me. So, anyway, what I'm going to be doing, oh man, he's going to land in a minute. In a minute, you'll see in the picture, I'm shouting because he's right over the top of me, is man comes down on a rope in front of me like a spider. Um, farther down there, over there, there is that ledge, I'm not going on that. The other thing is a little tip, let's turn that off now, I'll put this on so he can see me. You can obviously see me with a camera floodlight anyway. And they got thermal imaging so they don't even need my floodlight to see that I'm filming. Um, the other thing is, when you're fishing perpendicular down, when you wind in, very often, and this is, applies to anything, not just jig fishing with uh, these squid jigs, as you wind in, it tends to swing in towards you. Don't keep winding because your line and the lure will clip the rocks. I tend to let it swing in and then retrieve up as it does that outward swing and you can bring it up and over the top of the cliffs. Otherwise, you're just gonna be chafing away at your line all the time. And when you get a dupe, no, it's not gonna happen with squid, they're small, but if you have a good fish on, eventually you're just gonna put a wear or bit of fatigue in there, and you're going to have problems. Anyway, hopefully the SE Rescue realise I'm okay at the moment, or partially sane, anyway. I'm going to keep plugging away. Tomorrow, I'm going to come down and put some fish baits out here. Well, I'm going to have a change here, it's getting cold now. Nothing yet, but listen, I'm fishing right on low water. And I've got a bigger jig on, this one. It's got extra hooks, well not hooks, spines on the top here. And a heavier weight down there. And I'm just snagging, as you can see, bits of weed there. Um, but what I have noticed is, this one takes a charge from your light. So I'm going to take this off, and I might even be able to cast a little bit farther. If I show you, I'm going to put this Right, I'm going to be just charging this up like this. Hopefully you're going to be able to see this. It's got both lights on it now. If I switch this out, it might, might show in the camera. A sort of, it's got its own charge and luminescence. Hang on a second. Give it a good old blast. There you go. Oh, how about that, people? So that's in absolute pitch black. There's my head torch. The other big floodlight's off. There's my head torch. Switch it off, and you can see that's holding that charge there. Now, how long it holds that for, I don't know. A couple of casts, probably. And they can see that. So I'm going to have a few casts with this, and then I'll call it quits. Well, people, I've given it a really good go. I'm going to try and find if I can get up this now. I got down it around the other side, which is really sketchy. I'm hoping I can get my way up there. Um, I've lost the big lure, letting it dally near the uh, weed beds too much, but I say I am at low tide. Really needs high water uh, coinciding with dark. Um, and probably a big spring tide. It's a neat tide, so a small movement. Low water, not great, is it? Um, but I'm not staying out with a heavy cold at four o'clock in the morning just to get the right tide. So anyway, hopefully tomorrow I'll wake up okay, get a good night's sleep, fill up with pills, and back out again and have a go in the daytime, see what we can get. Right, let's get climbing.
Well, <coughs> I'm back feeling even worse than I did last night. Filled up with paracetamols. Cornflakes and paracetamol is the only way to go forward. And I've got to admit, I had to get my daughter to lift me down all these cliff bits. Just getting a little bit too old for it. And when you're weak and wobbly, it's, uh, it's best not to push it too far. I am down, I'm going to put two rods out. Uh, we've big baits, mega big. And they're going probably on a one-way ticket. I'm going to try and put them out for conga or bull hus. I've got a long tail lead there, which I don't need for casting. I've got something like 120 pound leader, which I, it's a boat trace, it's a boat fishing trace. And I've got Gentium piece with a humongous hook that I would normally use a wreck fishing. It's not clipped down, I'm just going to lob it out, leave it there, see what happens. If I pull in and it breaks, then I'll start going to some disposable stones I've got. So the main thing is, get it in the water. The tide's flooding, so it's coming this way behind me. Although I believe they do get an eddy system here. And I want to try and leave this area free for a bit of wrasse fishing with a light rod. So I'll probably just go straight out from here. Here comes a boat coming past, there is a charter boat. It looks like a fishing boat going to come past. Well, I've hit the bottom, I've bumped it once and I'm leaving it. So I know it's snaggy because I was here and I lost a squid jig out there last night. So it's just going to sit there for a good couple of hours. I just bumped it the once, so I figured the lead's okay. That's not to say that the bait's not in a, a, a kelp bed. Let's get the second one out. You can see down here, it's a sort of no-no. You know, <laughs> you need to be rock climber to get down there. On this side, just here down here, there's a, there's a nice shelf, but it's wet and slippery and slimy. Two foot drops in the water, it might be okay. I'll worry about that if I hook a decent fish. Um, but I'll make, if I do get some small wrasse or anything down here, I'm gonna swing them up. As you can see, there's sort of nowhere to fish other than that platform. Southwest, let me point the southwest is sort of this way. And there's a big storm coming in tomorrow, 40 mile an hour winds. I won't be standing here for a start. The swell will be pumping in and it's going over that ledge. So just be real, real careful rock fishing. Always best, really, for two of you, two together. Let's get this second rod out. Same sort of rig, just a boat rig, straight running ledger there. Nothing fancy, no clip downs. But the bait, I've got the other half of that mackerel, but I've elasticated it on there because I find the head section is always tough for crabs to chew on, the tail section is softer. So I've bound that one up with bait thread and they've got something to chew on. I'm just gonna lob this one out and leave it. Well, it's interesting because I've, I checked that other one straight out here, not very deep at all. I've sent it further right, it's definitely, that's a bigger lead and it went down a bit more. So I bumped it once, it's in the clear. So we're set with the big baits out. I've got a little rod here, I'm going to uh, drop over some ragworm and I'll show you the rig I'm using for that. It might just save the day. Conga should be at night, but who knows. 
with the storm coming tomorrow, I've only got today. Well, I've got here half a pound of ragworm, got it from Christchurch Angling, really good fresh bait there. More than enough for me for a little session here. And uh, the rod and reel I'm going to be using is this. So, rod I'm using for those tackle tasks amongst you who love rods and reels, a 2.10 metres. It's upside down ground. A Suzu or something, it's one of the Nomura ones. It says it's 12 to 20 pound class, test, whatever. Uh, really old uh, bait runner reel, 15 pound line. But, secret squirrel bit at the end is a nut, a disposable nut, that is just with a paternoster single worm. But with the worm, I've left a piece of worm at the top of the hook sticking out and a piece of worm at the bottom. So there's double movement there if there's any wrass around or small pollock, stuff like that. I'm actually getting tiny little bumps on that big bait now. It's either weed seesawing on the line of the current or it's the crab starting to pull on it. So we give it a good half hour, hour, leave it out there, see if something comes out. I'm gonna drop this down now, a little tip, because I know I'm gonna lose gear, that's why I'm not using weights, I'm using these nuts, is if you get, if you get a knife, now you can tie on, let's do this, you can tie on, just leave that right there. You can tie on a swivel here, right? There's, there's the line, there's the bait up here. You can tie a swivel on here and a, and a weak link of line. Uh, another way you should do it down the West Country, we've told this, by Alan Dingle, no less, um, who used to be the top guy down there, is just get the edge of a knife and just scrape that very gently. That's enough to weaken it. So if this nut does get snagged, you can break out and still get the fish in your hook back. Let's drop it down. See if there's any customer sniffing around there. I hope I'll put one up paracetamol. Oh. Again, hammering bites down there, so obviously the ragworm was a smart money move. And the small hooks, these are, I'll show you what these are, the B983. Um, they're sort of got a tiny speck of barb on them, so they're pretty easy to get out. Let's get this guy back. And I'll tell you what else is good. They are what the congas eat at night. So you'll find that rats don't often feed at night. That's my experience anyway. And I was always told that's because they all come in tight to the rock edges because they don't want to get eaten by Mr. Conga and the Conga's out. So, chances of me getting a Conga on the big baits, minimal really, got to be night fishing, bigger ties, but hey ho, I'm out here. Happy days, I've got the first fish out of the way. Got my bait back as well, look. Let's take a little peek with the other camera down there over the edge. Now it's not particularly deep here at all, but there are small rats. Generally I find it needs to be deeper to get the bigger rats. If I had a choice, I'd be down off that headland over there, but I can't get around there, it's too dodgy. I do, however, often fancy where most people fish straight down, I don't get me wrong, you probably wouldn't get here in the summer. And this is November, middle of November. You can always cast sideways down there. A lot of people just cast straight out. Obviously I just cast straight out with the big baits because I want the deeper water. But you can cast along there along the uh, edges. I used to go to Ascension Island and we used to, I noticed a lot of the group were tight into the volcanic rock walls. So it's risky losing a bit of gear down here. There is, if you can see that down there. You might, I might not see, there's a big reef. So I'm gonna lose gear in that. I'm just fishing to the left of the reef and straight down. All right, let's see if I can drop this worm down and get your hook up. So you can see the old nut works for these small wrasse, even got my worm back. These hooks are very, very sharp. That's why I like them for this type of fishing. We go to the edge, not too close, please, Graham. Just draw it back a bit. As I say it's not very deep there. 
I let it sink on the bottom and I just hold it across my fingers like this so I can feel the bites through the fingers and I can see the rod top as well they're on it already they are fish on it already I hold it dead still you might see there's the bite maybe you can see it I bring the rod back Now, if you get a lot of bites and then they go off, tail off, it's probably because the bait strip. So if it goes quiet, it'll pay you to check the bait and put a fresh worm out. And I'm going to do that right now. It wouldn't surprise me if that tug has pulled the worm up to pieces. Let's check it. Yeah, he's put a fresh piece of worm on. I don't use a whole worm, don't be afraid to snap them off, they're all going to get used. Snap them in half. If you put a big worm on, you'll probably more than likely just keep missing fish where they're chewing the bait off the hook. What I also do is if I have busted ones, I put them in a different fold of the paper because they do say it won't matter for this session, but if I wanted to use these worms again, well not again, they've been in the water ground, but you know what I'm saying, if I wanted to use some tomorrow, I want to keep if I can, the semi-dead ones from the live ones. So I'm going to snap that one off there, look, and I'll put him just in the corner, fold him over. Got a bit of weight on him. Oh yeah, look at the weight I'm using. Totally awesome hat. Right, let's try again. Hand white rag. What a setting, people, look at this. Look, if you're going rock fishing, be aware that could be very, very slippery if it rains. I'm going to try down the edge of that reef area over there. Just about there. Again, not very deep. No wonder I couldn't catch squid here last night. Oh, they're straight on it. But they're all small fish. That's why I couldn't catch a squid. I didn't have the, the depth. Nothing up. I mean, that, look how stupendously high that is. You can see the limitations around here fishing. Missing them. You can also watch the bow in the line down there. I don't know if you can see that where the, where the bow in the line goes. So it's curved down because the, the wind is pushing in towards me. That's a, oh, I thought that was a better fish. What they would also do is pick up the weight. I'm gonna drop it right down the edge here. It's very often, as I say, the wrasse will be in under the rocks at high water. Just watch that rod top, there they are. They're on it straight away. Here we go, right straight down the side, straight down the edge. Here he comes. Small wrasse, that's all it is, just a small wrasse. We know that, but it's a bit of fun, isn't it? Because at the end of the day... Whee! At the end of the day, I'd like something to pick up one of those big baits. I'm gonna try down here. Two hooks, great, you might get two fish. Also, two chances of getting snagged. People will say, well, what are you gonna do if you hook a really big fish? Well, I'm gonna walk it around there and just chance it. And you can see how it surges up over there. Plenty of small wrasse here, for sure. Another good bait is hardback crab, about the size, a bit bigger than a 50p. That's very good for bigger wrasse. The small ones shred all the legs off it, but the bigger ones will take the body. Get a lot of small fish bites there. I could go even smaller with the hook, but I really can't be bothered. If I do get one about two pounds of decent wrasse, so I'm not going to bring it up on a small fine wire hook. Oh, wow, that's a better bang. Oh, don't go too near the edge, Graham. Don't go too near the edge. A little bit bigger. Here he comes, number three. There we go. Hopefully if I put it that way, you can see him there. It's all what we call fun fish. I lost quite a bit of line last night with the, uh, when I lost a jig out there in a weed bed. 
I'd like to see one of those rods go. That was cast on the edge of that reef there. Yeah, he's a bit bigger. I know we're only talking nominal amounts here, people. But just by going down the edge of that ledge, got a slightly, slightly bigger one there. While the light's good, I can actually uh, see where to drop it. I feel it undercuts down there. I feel it's an undercut on that bit of reef. So I'm going to go about there and then let it swing back up underneath. It's quite entertaining when you're doing rass fishing using a, a rig set up like this, light rod. I've got the big rods just up there, nothing happening but this keeps you amused and you never know you might get a really big rass or something like a pollock who knows. Now down here if I can get to the edge I'm going to hold the, uh, the camera out. Bit sketchy, bit sketchy guys. See that gully down there? If that extended out farther back to the left there, that would be a good rat gully. There might be fish just down in there where the turbulence uh, comes. And then over this side, let's give you a tour around it. I feel, in fact, I can hear, oh, there, there is a real nice rat gully almost looks like this has been cut out square and apparently this is crumbling all the time and breaking down because there's some caves up the top there and they've been uh, bricked off stop people going in there because it's collapsing hopefully it won't collapse on me today and you can see that's what we would call a nice rass gully in there i will have a drop down there a drop down it's a tad shallow but you know places like ireland where it's deep off the of headlands give you some absolutely phenomenal rass fishing I think over the back there I can see some colour under the water so I figure all this has gone down and crashed down you know millennia ago I think it's covered by kelp and weeds at Snag City that's why this one to the right is a little bit deeper the big bait I, I cast out so nice just to have a rock mark totally to yourself in the winter no grief and aggravation right I'm going to drop down this side figuring just off this point here about there I could have already lost one set of gear there's rass straight on it all small ones Another one. Well, must be nearly the top of the tide now, and uh, still a little bit of pull there. But as so often happens, the wind picks up, either with the bottom of the tide or the top of the tide on that change, and that's what's happened. So good job I brought my jacket with me. A few walkers on the cliffs. But if it does rain, I've already scouted out a couple of places. I've got a big plastic sack that I can put over my cameras here. Look, I can get right under here. Okay, so I can get under here. Look for somewhere that you can get out of the rain if there's a big lashing rainstorm. And then there's another one here. Look, perfect. I can get. So if you don't fall down. I can get. I can get right under here if I wanted. It's like a sort of mini cave there. One day it's coming down. But that will keep me dry. Should a big storm come up, hopefully, I will have gone home. And look, the water comes through here as well. You can hear it down there. That must be what eats away at this rock formation. 
you can see it's all cracking and breaking and this being the Jurassic coast they get a lot of uh, fossils and stuff and I think I've seen one down there which I'll try and get with the other lens you can see here I think these are parasitic worms that have bored into the mud years ago somebody tell us is that right sort of worm cast if you like well I've had to wrap up a bit now I don't want this going to bronchitis um. <coughs> Mentioning this is the sort of Jurassic coast where all the last of the dinosaurs were in the UK. When I climbed down, you know, last night I noticed, I thought, is that an ammonite there? Somebody tell us. It's absolutely huge. It's got all ridges through, so I figure it's not a steel ring. And I can see the stone or shape, whatever it is there. So what is that? Is that an absolute, look at the size of my hand. Is that a massive ammonite or snail or whatever from the Jurassic period? Because now I've got about 15 rats, all the same size. I'm looking, I'm looking around here and I'm realizing exactly how fractured all this is. Immensely cracked, hugely cracked. Look at it, look, it is waiting to go. I don't want any earthquakes or tremors for the next few hours. <coughs> well that wind is picked up as I rightly said bang on 12 o'clock. <coughs> I think what's happening is coming from the southwest so I don't know how long I'm going to be fishing, as long as I can. Nothing on the big bait, so I'm going to wheel them in and check them in a minute. But what's going to happen here is, already there's, well I'm going to say, foot high waves starting to come, just on the wind. But when this tide turns and ebbs the other way, it will lift those waves up, what we call a wind against tide, which you don't want when you're boat fishing. And uh, it's going to be a mass of white water, I'm guessing. And then tomorrow, coming in tonight, it's going to be 40 miles an hour. The other thing is, should I be getting rid of this? The wife said, take that, because you need some fruit to build you up. So, they're bad luck in boats, or we reckon they are, superstition. But, are they on the shore? We'll find out if I get more fish when I eat this. Whoa. Wind, whisper. Fish on guys, fish on. Wow boys, a conga! Well, well, well. As black as you want. A conga. Wowie. Only just gone out. I think that was three quarters of a mackerel. 
Brilliant. Success. My God, the rub was nearly bent double in the rest. Conger eel, not a big one, admittedly. He's, he's, he's most unhappy. He's throated that whole mackerel. Maybe it's the turn of the tide. Maybe it's the big bait. Anyway, let's get him back. Well pleased with that one. That's what I came for. All those rats, I must have 15 or 20 rats. And now, the cold green is well. And I just realised, people, I got that conga after I got rid of the banana. Well, fresh bait's all out now, guys. This is it. So pleased to get that conga reel. What a setting I've got here. Just tucked off the wind, but it's splashing up big time down there, which is a good reason not to go there, as like I told you earlier. That wind changed as soon as the top of the tide came, and there's been a guy going past a small rowing boat who's really struggling. Well, I did tell you that the uh, wind against tides a whole different ball game. You can see the sea here now. Totally changed. Totally changed in 20, 30 minutes. Well, I lost a set of gear. So rather than lose good legs because the wind's coming up, I've got a pulley rig. I use one of these things called stones. S-T-O-N-Z, which I don't know, I think they're freshwater ones. They've got a ring on them and it's a stone. So that's what I basically call something I can afford to lose. And I find they sink slower into a snag than a leg, if that makes sense. Of course, you know, I've got it clipped down like that. It's not going to cast as far, that's obvious, but it should sink slower hoping it won't get snagged. The wind is getting right up. The other thing you might want to do is, when it's swirling around like this, that small nut I've got on there might not be quite enough. I mean, I like not to anchor it on the bottom. I'd like to just have it raising the rod top, just bumping it along. And that's what I've been doing, but I might have to put, you know, one or two extra on. So don't be afraid to put an extra weight or two on when you get more wind and more tide and more waves. But I find just don't nail it hard on the bottom, and that way it'll wash out the snags.
but the sun's gone off the cliffs now, so it's pretty cold. I've got like the last clip down here, sort of front half of a herring head, and one of these stones weights. Lob it down, give it the last hour. I'm down to the uh, five minute warning and nothing else has happened so I'm going to pack up, I want to go and get a sunset shot up by the lighthouse and then I've saved a few worms and tomorrow my wife wants to go shopping with the daughter so I might dive down Weymouth Pier and see if I can get some mini species down there. Really enjoyed it and I got lucky with that small conga. It's made the trip and obviously it's the setting isn't it? It is the setting that makes a fishing like this so enjoyable.